Welcome to the Dayton Space Sim. On this sim we're going to be doing a variety of data visualizations and space visualizations. So to start with we've done a simulation of the Apollo 11 lunar landing and Tranquility Base. And what we want to do in this short video is give you a guided tour of the simulation. To start with here we are in the arrivals area where we have a globe of the moon showing you the locations of the various Apollo landing sites with Apollo 11 clearly highlighted. On the wall we have a blog post that we did about a year ago talk about the way in which virtual environments such as this might actually be used to visualise the real next moon landing sometime in the next decade or so. Here we have the rules of the sim. The most important one is that you must wear a spacesuit when you're down on the surface so please go to X Street and buy a spacesuit before heading down. There's also a head-ups display which would be important so as to actually get the educational value from the simulation. So if you don't mind I'm now going to go and get changed into my spacesuit. We're now going to head over to one of the two teleports and just to touch the teleport as normal and you'll be sent down to the surface. Okay, it's important when you're uh, on the surface to uh, set your uh, environment settings to midnight uh, so you don't see the sun. We've also put a barrier up around uh, the sim uh, so you don't see the sea or anything else like that. And the landscape here is just meant to generally represent the moon. We haven't actually made it model exactly on the terrain features. But you will see uh, a particular instance of that later on. OK, I'm just going to bound off across the uh, moon in the direction of Tranquility Base. And here we are at Tranquility Base just waiting for the lunar module to arrive. And here it is descending down from orbit. We built uh, a new model of the lunar module, we weren't happy with any of the ones uh, that we could uh, find in Second Life and also we also wanted to be able to do things like this and fly nicely into location for us. The next thing we want to do is actually attach the uh, head-up display so I'm just going to bring that, that out of my inventory and as we mentioned you pick up the head-up display at the arrivals area and what we have here is a variety of controls um, in order to uh, control various aspects of the simulation uh, and also the ability to view video. So what I'm doing now is just position myself just by the ladder okay, and I can actually watch the live video. Now. And one of the questions that we actually pose in the blog post is what it would be like in 10-15 years time okay, if actually the information we got enabled us to actually to see the avatar step, of the astronaut step. walking down the steps instead of just having to watch a two-dimensional video as we did back in 1969. Watching video and animation, of course, is all very well, but we wanted to create a far more interactive uh, simulation than that. And we're quite lucky that we found a map that actually showed the locations that the astronauts actually walked on the Moon. So what we're able to do is actually overlay this map at a one-for-one -one scale in Second Life. This enables us not only to see where the lunar module is and where each of the science experiments are, but also see exactly the paths walked by the astronauts, and even where the individual craters and the individual rocks are. So we've used that information to model the area the astronauts actually walk to quite a high degree of accuracy. And as we zoom in, you'll actually be able to see the markers that show where the rocks are and where the craters are. What we've also done now is we've also overlaid the positions of some of the photography that was taken. So you'll actually be able to stand in the positions of some of the, the photos and actually see the photos at the same time as viewing the simulation. So what I'm going to do now is take a walk around the lander and as I walk up to one of the camera symbols and you can switch these camera symbols on and off through the HUD if you don't actually want to see them. So just hop over here and as I move on to one of the camera symbols then I immediately get to the photograph that was taken from that point and the camera itself gives me the direction to face so as to actually see the same shot as the astronauts actually took. And you'll also see on the head-up display there you also get some introductory text as well um, about what the photo is about and we even show the elapsed time for the mission as well. Here we are at the uh, solar wind experiment and if we actually touch the experiment then again we get a photograph of the experiment that's taken by the astronauts, we get some more descriptive text uh, but this time we also get a hyperlink uh, and we can uh, touch the hyperlink 
and then call up a web page uh, that actually describes that particular experiment in a bit more detail. OK, here we are now down to the south of the uh, lunar module, uh, looking here at uh, the Apollo surface uh, lunar experiment package. And again, a photograph there showing one of the astronauts by it. And again, we can touch the uh, hyperlink and uh, read more information about it on the web. And now I'm actually going to follow Armstrong's uh, path out to one of the panorama locations. And as we move up to the panorama location, again we get the photograph that was taken from there, looking back towards the uh, lunar module. And we can also actually access the panorama itself. We just touch the uh, small ghosted button there. And up comes the panorama that was taken by Armstrong. And hide the panorama again. And now we can actually enjoy our simulated panorama. First of all with all the overlaid information and then in its more natural state. And now the EVA is almost over, so we're going to bunny hop our way back towards the lunar module. And now we're going to do something that Armstrong and Aldrin couldn't do, which is we're actually going to watch the ascent stage of the lunar module head back up into moon's orbit. Hopefully this video has given you some idea of the sort of simulation that we can achieve in Second Life. We've been able to mix the 2D and 3D audio and video resources, so it's created a quite immersive experience of what it would have been like to have been on Tranquility Base and to access a lot of the information that was captured and recorded at the time. Please feel free to visit this simulation anytime. There's a URL at the end of this video and that will give you a slurl so to actually visit the sim. We hope to see you on the moon.